Hi, I'm Jason, the creator of The Grey Rooms. Now, while we're hard at work putting together some new mind-flaying nightmares for Season 4, management and I thought we'd introduce you to another great new podcast from our friends over at Pacific Obadiah and SCP Archives, Margaret's Garden. Everton was the perfect American suburb until everyone vanished. Seventy years later, this abandoned town is stirring up the attention of two federal agents as they fall into a world unlike any you've ever known. From the creators of SCP Archives, Lake Clarity, and the fall of the House of Sunshine comes a new thrilling story set in a world as magical as it is mysterious. Margaret's Garden is an immersive fiction podcast featuring voices of iconic actors like Zach Labresco from Wolf 359, Jordan Cobb from Janus Descending, and the Grey Room's own Tanya Milojevic and Graham Rowett. This 10-episode series details the rise and fall of Everton, a small town shadowed in the aftermath of World War II and home to the Everett brothers. Ernie Everett, feeling the world has become unsafe and afflicted by change, needed to create a suburban paradise. And his brother Eddie held a mysterious tome that promised safety and the return to civility. Together, they created Everton, a town laid out in nonsensical turns, roads lined with energy siphons instead of streetlights, and other magical hijinks. That is, until the night everyone vanished. Since then, Everton has become an unfolding mystery, 70 years in the making. So without further ado, we present to you, Margaret's Garden. Welcome to Everton. Five short years ago, this sprawling checkerboard of unused land was sitting overgrown, untended, and uncared for. Then the brothers Everett came along to change all that. Now, this Elysian field holds hundreds of happy families. There's an on-site golf course for father. Four nearby access to shopping centers for little Susan. Don't say out past your curfew, young lady. And of course, every home comes fully furnished with the latest and greatest appliances for mother. Don't get spoiled now. The ideal modern home, fully realized and all in one complete package. And with the Everton Housing Committee on site, you'll have nothing to fear in your own slice of suburban paradise. They'll keep your landscaping done, the gutters cleaned, and the undesirables out. And more! But don't take my word for it. Let's hear from the man whose inspired vision has brought this utopian dream into existence. One of our founders, Eddie Everett. Hello, neighbors. I'm Eddie Everett. My brother Ernie and I are the founders of this little town. When I was overseas fighting the good fight for freedom and justice, the only thing that kept me going were the thoughts of my warm bed, lush green grass, and a slice of mom's apple pie, which is to say, I was longing for a home. But what did I see when I got back to that longed for home? A city filled with noise and chaos, street after street after street, filled to the brim, the air was dirty, the grass brown, and an endless parade of ungrateful good-for-nothings yelling words that would... Well, friends, it was too much. I longed for the idea of home that I'd fought for, that we'd all fought for. But safety and security, freedom from smog and want, it isn't just an idea anymore. It's a place. A real place. It's Everton. And it's... What you have just heard, dear listener, was the charming advertisement for a well-planned and good-intentioned community smack dab in the heartland of America. Well, maybe a bit right of the heart. Everton. However, what you don't know is that Everton, that gilded city on the hill, has been abandoned for the last 70 years. All of its residents spirited away in the middle of the night, leaving behind furnished houses, spoiling groceries, and TVs, 
all tuned to Channel 4. While the mass exodus had initially shocked the country, the passing of time, the next new fad, and other world events have pushed this incident from our collective memory. Now, Everton has grown decrepit. The houses have begun to lean, the once straight roads have begun to buckle and crack, and Mother Nature has laid her random claim to that which was once so precisely laid out. Watching over this once vibrant hamlet of peace, liberty, and the American way is one Nathan Mars, groundskeeper extraordinaire and security expert for Everett Brothers Limited. With everyone out of town, Nathan Mars saw it fit to elect himself mayor and take over the exquisite mayoral office atop town hall. We find Mr. Mars feet up, beer in hand, and magazines sprawled across his legs. It's a peaceful night, like every other night in Everton. Hey, <laughs> Mars! <laughs> Mars! Huh? Can I get your help? Help? In my day. Dinosaurs walk the earth. Funny guy. What are you even doing? I need to screw this bit in here and... What in the hell? AC's unplugged, I swear! It wasn't me! Should we check the breakers? No. That's no breaker. That sounded like an energy well. A what? That ain't right. Just ease up. I gotta go check something out at the mall. You got your talkie on you? Yes, sir. It's charged? Yes, sir, I promise. It's charged. For sure this time. Keep it on you. Go down to the basement. Check the breakers anyway. Make sure nothing's gone haywire. All right. Then you want me to meet you at the mall? No. No. I'll radio if I need you. All right, boss. While Mr. Mars knows a great deal about Everton, its inner workings, its outer workings, and even the explanation for its missing residents, he doesn't know why the power went out, nor does he know the extent of the outage but he does suspect that he knows exactly where the explosion came from. While Mars follows his intuition, Herschel heads into the basement of Town Hall. The once illustrious building has fallen into disrepair and ruin over these last few years, but Herschel, all too familiar with the long shadows and the ghostly echoes of its cavernous halls, mindlessly follows his usual route to the basement. Mm, oh, fuck. Did I forget... No, no, uh, cool. As Herschel steps into the immense rotunda of the town hall, its normally vacant and forgotten space gives way to a new, sinister sensation. For some odd reason, this time, it feels like it's slowly closing in around him, contracting, constricting him. Hello? His flashlight beam almost as if in solidarity, seems not quite as bright as before, its beam tightening into a fine point rather than splashing its reassuring light onto the wall. A knot grows in Herschel's stomach. Anyone here? Jesus Christ, boss! Herschel, how's a look down there? You scared the shit out of me! Language! Did you check the murals? Murals? Why would I... Herschel stops and shines his light up onto the rotunda's walls. There, murals of Everton's first residence are painted in various historic scenes recalling America's greatness. They're a bit saccharine and outdated, but also... What in God's name? Boss, you're not going to believe this, but I think... I think someone painted over their eyes. What? There's, like, a black line all over their faces, over their eyes. Cheese and rice of all the nights. Get down to the basement, my boy, and then get my bolt cutters. Don't worry about checking the breakers. But how did you know about them faces? Just kids, Hurst. Pranks. Give me those cutters and get me some copper wire. As much as you can carry. Why? Less sass, more gas. Don't make me dock your pay. All right. Copy that. Just give me a sec. I need to get down to the utility room. Don't forget, I need the cutters. Sharp, old cutter, or something. Right? 
Ah, oh, shit. Fucking batteries. Ah. Bolt cutters? What the hell is copper wire going to- Hello? Who's there? Darkness. Nothing more. Perhaps I spoke too soon. Keep it cool, Herschel. You're freaking yourself out over nothing. This is what happens when you binge watch Haunting of the Hill House until three in the morning. Gardening shears. These might work. Copper wire. Closet. Ah, uh, of course. Stuck. Why wouldn't it be when you're freaking out? While Herschel is yanking on the door like a man who's lost his wits, just above him, where a bit of the wall has crumbled away, a few stray weeds have grown through the cracks, including a small, perfectly round dandelion past its bloom. Herschel's insistent yet fruitless clamoring against the door has set to tumble its cottony white halo of seeds. As the small flurry of seeds toss and turn, riding along the still air, one stray seed charts its own diligent course and falls gently, alighting unfelt onto his sweating cheek. <laughs> well, you're not who I was expecting. Who the fuck? Fuck, please work. Boss? Boss? Do you copy? Is anyone there? Mars? Do you copy? Listen, I don't know who the fuck is there, who the fuck you are, but stay away from me. I'm not kidding. I'm not afraid to- Do you hear that? The waves. I don't- What's happening? An impossible breeze, cool and refreshing, smelling of sea salt and sandy shores, sweeps through the empty hall. Herschel, not the brave boy that he thought he was, is having a moment. One of those terrible, terrible moments when you just know that something very bad is about to happen to you. What's your name? I gotta get out of here! Herschel springs to his feet and begins to make his way through that empty black hall. Those once familiar steps have been lost to fear and poor Herschel begins to doubt his bearings. Thankfully, his trusty flashlight has begun to flicker now, which he first takes for a blessing but that empty hall, filled with that unseen sea and that disembodied voice, and the fear that is pouring out of him like his own waves, have turned his hands into trembling animals at the ends of his arms, and his eyes threaten tears. Herschel, is it? I feel it written across your netzach. My what? It's okay. It's all okay. It's not. What the fuck? What the fuck? Mars! Herschel takes another shaky step, but the ground has given way below his feet, as if the cold, polished slab of Italian marble has turned to sand. Then, the unmistakable weight of a hand comes to rest on his shoulder. Herschel, sweetie, I have a favor to ask you. Everton? What kind of person names a town after themselves? Stalin, Alexander the Great, bunch of Central Asian shitheels. Henry Ford, your standard classic breed of asshole. So this Eddie and Ernie were... You read the brief? Yeah. Mind if we run through it again? Sure. Lay it on me. Okay, uh, last night at approximately 6.57 p.m., a power surge and subsequent blackout originated from, uh, somewhere in the aforementioned self-aggrandizing planned community of Everton. Which has been abandoned and the subject of urban legends, etc., etc. Uh, but overseen still by a Nathan Mars and his assistant, Herschel Hewitt. Turns out you're not so green after all. And by gods, you can read. Still nervous as hell. Don't worry about it, Harris. That's to be expected. It's your first assignment. 
No amount of prep or files or briefing can ever actually prepare you for the field work. Uh, I think I liked it better behind a desk. No, you don't. How do you know? Shape of your nose. Shape of my... A nose like that craves the field. We haven't even arrived yet. You can decide if you'd like to be a desk plant after we've investigated the town. Deal? Yeah. Deal. Plus, this is an open and shut case. Why's that? Old town. Two probable meth head janitors. Nothing but gas stations and cheap diners. Probably spilled soda on a circuit board. Then why send us? You know why. They think it belongs to our agency. Because of the disappearances? The history of the, uh... Yup. So, where do you think they all went? Oh, they're dead. No doubt about it. Kool-Aid party, probably. Ah, uh, Flavor-Aid. What? Jonestown was Flavor-Aid. Everyone always says Kool-Aid, but it wasn't. What's the fucking difference? Yeah, about four cents a container. Jonestown. Another town named after a killer crank. But if they all died, where did the bodies go? Acid, pigs, pits. Look at this place. You could hide a Brooklyn of bodies out here. So you think the town was a cult? A suburb without a city, far from prying eyes. People keeping to themselves, keeping clear of Big Brother. Their own little utopia, right? Interesting theory. You got another idea? Huh. What if they did go somewhere? Like it says in the brief. The brief. Give me a break. Let's just look at the logistics. How'd an entire city of people break camp and move without a single person noticing? Even if Everton was secluded, the nearby residents would have seen something, right? And how do you transport over a thousand people without a single vehicle or other method of transport leaving the city? Every car, truck, van, and carriage is still sitting out there on rotten tires. And that brings up all the rest. Why leave everything else behind? You build this perfect city in the sticks, fill it with all the bells and whistles, and then just abandon it all? It doesn't make sense. Hear me out. Oh, Lord, the next words out of your mouth better not be, I believe. No, 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 no. Underground tunnels. Huh. Right? The Evertons built the town during the height of the Cold War. It was the trend. Lots of bunkers and underground things being built all over the place. It's flat country out here. Easy to dig deep, no one watching. Where's the other end of the tunnel? Huh. Good question. Unless they all went to the worm. We're here. You mind getting the fence? Sure. Everton's current state of security isn't much to write home about. It's enclosed by a small chain-link fence, primarily erected to deter nosy neighbors, looters, and the ever-present conspiracy hacks. In its heyday, Everton was a totally different animal, one finely tuned to the outsider, a vigilant defender of its territory. Everton never liked the wrong kind of people messing up their cozy little town. Everton didn't tolerate beatniks or government investigators or even the well-intentioned boys from the Encyclopedia Britannica plying their wares trying to make an honest buck. These were all undesirables as far as Everton was concerned. But that was then, and this is now. And as of 6.57 p.m. yesterday evening, Everton has drawn much more attention to itself than its former residents would have ever wanted. You see... Unlike the other planned communities of its time, Everton was going to be completely self-contained, a self-enclosed ecosystem, as future-proof as humanly possible. While the brothers Everett thought that they knew exactly what they were doing and were certain of its moral superiority, they ultimately had no idea of the long-lasting repercussions. We rarely do. As Special Agents Washington and Harris drive through the outskirts of the abandoned town they took note of the strange lampposts dotting the streets. 
One thing in particular stood out. There's no lights. What? The street lamps. They're all... wrong. Let's turn back the clock, shall we? The where is still Everton. The when is post-World War II, and it's a late night for our town's founders. Hey, can we talk? Ernie, yes, yes, come in. I want to show you something. What is it? You see this? The model of our town? Yes, Eddie, I've seen it. I've lived it. For Christ's sakes, I've been selling it for the past- <laughs> Yes, yes, the model of the town. That it is. But look closer, dear brother. I've made a new addition. Right there. That's actually what I want to talk to you about. Siphons. Energy siphons. Incredible, aren't they? The technology of tomorrow. All thanks to Mr. Conway, of course. That man is a brilliant engineer. Eddie. With the siphons strategically placed along the sapphirate pattern, we should be able to perfectly capture- Eddie. What? We're over budget. I mean, way over budget. Like, the bank's breathing so far down our necks, I can feel them at my waistline over budget. Oh, okay. Just settle down, Ern. What exactly is the problem? Uh, just settle down. Here. Page 10, line 4. I see. And? And? You're not looking, Eddie. Look at the numbers. We'll have workers walking off the job site on Friday if we can't pay them. We've blown through both loans. Then we'll take out another- We can't! No one wants to put another red cent into our empty lot. We've got no collateral, no assets, and no money. I... Hmm. I see. That is a definite problem. What do you suggest we do? Suggest? What do I suggest? I've no idea. We've no good alternatives. We can sell some of our building materials wholesale, earn back enough to finish the first few houses, maybe. Absolutely not. That's unacceptable. Well, I don't... Ernie, look at me. Yeah. It's going to be okay. We're going to start selling plots. Lots. Not plots. They're homes, not graves, Eddie. A grave is a home, if you use it right. A forever home. What in the... Who's gonna buy empty lots, Eddie? Tell me that. Ha, no one. Then how do you... Listen. You've got some showings tomorrow, right? And an open house? Yeah. And how's the model house looking? Empty. It's finished, but there's no way we can afford to furnish it. We're that broke. That's fine. It's better empty. But... It's painted and carpeted, right? Yes. Great. Ernie, you're going to sell them more than a plot. More than a house. You're going to sell them the idea of a house. A home. You're going to sell them Everton. Use those pamphlets Mr. Conway cranked out. Show people all the space they'll have. All that could be. All that will be. Not what is. Will be. Not. Is. That's not gonna fly. Who's gonna fall for that claptrap? You're right. Of course not. We need a... How about this? Imagine everything. Eh, they're gonna have to. Exactly. Imagine everything. Every appliance. Every cozy night in. Every birthday party and every backyard wedding. Possibility. The American dream. It's all possible in Everton. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me put a pitch together. I can work with what we have, I guess. Oh, I know you can. If we can sell just a few lots, that's enough to pay everyone. Maybe we can start another handful. Please, think bigger, Ernie. Sell 10, 20, get these folks on board, get them excited about what we're doing out here. Tell everyone to tell their friends, tell their families, by the weekend, we can have all of Elm Street sold. All right, big dreamer. I'll do that. Good. And Ernie? Yeah. You won't believe what we can do together. What we are going to do together, I promise you. I've got something up my sleeve that you'd never imagine. I'll see you in the morning, okay? Okay, Eddie. In the morning. Night. Good night, Ernie. <sighs> ah. Mr. Conway, I didn't disturb you, did I? No, no, of course not. Burning the midnight oil, as it were. Good, good. Listen, I need a favor. In the book, there was a page on... Oh, what was it? Why, yes. Yes, I think that's exactly what it was. If it's no trouble, would you mind? Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Conway. That's exactly what I'm after.
Is there a single straight road in this entire town? Looks like a bunch of circles to me. What kind of town is built like this? Kind of town that pops up overnight, disappears in the blink of an eye, and then causes a massive power outage more than 50 years later? The kind of town that has our agency investigate it? Fair point. Let me see that map. This makes no sense to me. Well, that makes two of us. I think we're on Dahlia, so if we follow this north, it'd take us to Maine, right? No, I turned on Williams. We're on Cedar. But we entered from... whoa... Over here. Wash. What? Uh, oh. Is that a... astronaut? Co- cosmonaut. How can you tell? Insignia on the arm, see? Indeed. Standing in the center of the street is a cosmonaut. Their onyx skin mixed with swirls of purple, green, and red. Distant stars freckled across the expanse of the cosmonaut's face, and two bright twinkling stars shone as eyes. The cosmonaut tilts their head and waves. Should we... I have no idea. Uncertain and unable to shift his eyes away from the spacesuit, Harris returns the wave. Hi, I am Pasha. I am created from space, dust, and entropy. Well, their name is Pasha. With that, the cosmonaut turned and walked down Jefferson Avenue. Uh, We should, uh, maybe follow? Right? Agent Harris, are you seriously suggesting we follow the space person? I could explain what knocked the power out, and I like it better than driving in circles. (sighs) Goddamn rookie's always looking for a way to die. Well, we're lost. And there's a damn astronaut. Cosmonaut. I don't care. There's all sorts of death shit that thing could be. Vampiric entity, time-space anomaly, lifelike synthetic, spell trap, doppelganger, succubus, incubus, bus bus, alien, or lure chamber. Trust me, I've seen it all. Fine. But whatever happens, it's on you. Go to the middle of nowhere, take the new guy. It'll be easy, they said. Could have slept in, gone for breakfast, tacos, and mimosas. But no, 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 no. Space freaks and endless circles and hick towns. Washington and Harris reluctantly follow the cosmonaut through Everton. They pass row after row after row of tidy, cookie-cutter houses until they finally reach what looks to be the commercial district. Abandoned businesses line the streets, and at the far end of the main drag, a large mall looms in the distance like an imposing fortress. Ah, they must have loved shopping. Great. Is that where the ghost ruski is taking us? Hey Vlad, you want to buy some vodka? Some borscht, maybe? A nice beaver pelt hat? Looks like they do. They're headed toward the mall. I hate malls. Perhaps the best part of taking a trip to Everton, 70 years after the mass exodus of residents, is the lack of traffic. The agents hardly appreciated their prime parking spot at the once bustling shopping mecca. Grab the flashlights from the glove box, check your weapon and firing lines, and stay on me. Uh, All right, let me just see what I can find here. Are you ready for this? We're losing our lead, Harris. Yeah, here you go, and, uh, weapon, check. All right. Inside the mall, a few stray beams of sunlight illuminate cracks in the concrete walls. A faint blue light calls the agents deeper into the structure. Pasha stops and turns, and then repeats. Hi, I am Pasha. What the fuck? Uh, that was anticlimactic. Is this where you wanted to bring us, Pasha? An empty mall? It's where the waves meet the world. What does that mean? It doesn't mean shit. It's all magical ghost shit. Pasha? Is that a name, or... Uh. Russian name. Means small. Also an honorific title in Turkey. Okay, Agent Dictionary, this is all off task anyway. Let's get back to- Shh. You hear that? Scared. Don't. Weapons ready. Hello? Is someone in here? I'm Agent Washington. If you need help- 
She'll hear you. Over there, by the kiosk. On your lead. Don't let the ghost thing out of your sight. Nathan Mars, caretaker and protector of Everton, lays slouched against a long-forgotten hat kiosk. A dark red stain slowly spreads across his stomach. Uh, looks like a stab wound. Apply pressure. Who hurt you, sir? Margaret. She... I don't know how... She's back. Helpful. Who is Margaret, sir? Is she still here? Who are you? The name's Mars. I don't know if she's still here. Should we get him back to the car? Yes, get ready to grab his other arm. Okay, Mars, we're going to move you, all right? Keep pressure on that wound for me, okay? Margaret? Please, get me out of here. It's okay. We're, we're going. This will become the home of conflict. We must leave. Great. Hey, Margaret. Are you busy? Ernie, is that you? A piece of them. In the flesh. Give me just a moment to finish cleaning. There. Laundry folded. Organization is interesting. I've never imagined what fun. Oh, the closet. <sighs> Ernie? Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. I... What's the matter? I talked to Eddie today. About what? About you. Oh. He... Well, he's worried. He says everyone in town is starting to get a little suspicious, you know? About... all the things you can do. Folks are starting to wonder about where you came from. I mean, where you really came from. And I'm not welcome anymore? No, 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 nothing like that. He, Eddie had Conway, they think they have an idea. Conway made this. From his pocket, Ernie pulls out a simple but lovely silver chain. Dangling from the end is a black pyramid-shaped gem set into a sterling silver plate. The gem doesn't glint or gleam, but instead seems to soak up all the surrounding light. Ernie gazes at the gem for a moment, before squeezing his eyes shut and rubbing at his temples. It's a... A cage? Yeah. A cage. It won't... Conway said it doesn't hurt. Or... It probably won't hurt. But it'll... Limit me. Yeah. I... Margaret. I'm sorry. I didn't think things would go like this. You don't have to. Does he want me to wear it all the time? Yes. Eddie would prefer you did. Just until things settle down a bit, you know? Get all these looky-loos talking about something else. And what about you? I think... I think it'd make things... simple. Simple? We all give up things, dear. For our family. For our health. It's not... N no one gets to have everything. What have you given up? Plenty. After Eddie came back from... Look, it's not about me. I don't want to make you do anything you're uncomfortable with. But maybe we can try it out? Just for a few days. And if it doesn't work out, or if you don't like it, then we take it off and forget all about it. Alright. Yeah. That can't be too bad, right? Just a few days to test it out. Okay, Ernie. I trust you. <laughs> does... does it hurt? No, it's... It just feels like nothing. All at once. Nothing. See, that's not so bad. You'll barely notice it. Just like Conway said. Nothing can be okay. And if it doesn't work out... I'll miss making the flowers grow. Hey, you could still do that. We'll get some fertilizer and some seeds. Uh, you could do it like normal folks. Normal? Yes. Thank you, Ernie. 
Anything for you, darling. Please, we must go. This is not the place for you to. Danger is coming. Pasha, I don't want to hear it. Retreat, retreat, retreat! Nathan! I can hear you! Who the fuck is that? I think we ought to listen to them, Wash. Let's get out of here. Fine. Hold tight, Mr. Mars. We're moving again. From the darkness, Herschel Hewitt emerges, his body jerking as if controlled by invisible strings. A wicked smile, not quite his own, has stretched across his face. A voice, also not quite his own, calls out. Mars, this is no way to treat an old friend. Stop right there! This quarrel does not concern you. It does now. Stop right there, drop whatever you're holding, and come out of the shadows. You've chosen the wrong side. Wrong side of what? Somewhat Herschel seems to fold himself into the dark corner of a shoe store. Stop. Not another step. The Fisher King, wounded, waited and waited for the Grail Knight. Are you the one who will heal the wound that never heals? Not now, Pasha. Suddenly, with a flap of invisible wings, Semi-Herschel flies from the store at an incredible speed. Washington fires her weapon at Herschel, but the bullets vanish into thin air. In the flurry of motion, it was easy to miss the garden shears in puppet Herschel's hands. And in truth, Agent Washington only saw the shears as they opened and then closed around Nathan Marr's throat. Time seems to float and slow as Herschel continues to force the shears closed. Until, with a pop, Nathan Marr's head separates from his lifeless body and rolls to the side. Herschel turns to Washington. He strikes a smile filled with remembered history, then collapses. What the fuck? This way, please. There's no time. Pasha, please. A man was just... I think he's dead. No shit, Harris. When the head separates from the shoulders like that, it usually results in death. Friends, please follow. It called us friends. That's definitely not a murder trap. Follow me below. A well leads to another place. A safe place. What do you think? Crazy cosmonaut, severed heads, linked to the well? Would it be better or worse if it was? So, friend, you want us to go down? Let's go then. Yes, follow, friends. Lead the way. Their voice sounds kinda... distant, right? Yeah, it does. I don't exactly know what this thing is or where this well is, but... I know now why the agency sent us out here. There is definitely some weird shit going on. Yeah. I can't imagine how another agency would handle this. There is no other agency for this kind of shit, Harris. Weird shit is our sole providence. What was your first encounter like? Well, nothing like yours. Ha! <laughs> uh, no dead bodies? No, there were dead bodies, just more dancing and no cosmonaut. So, okay, so this is still weird by our standards, right? Seven out of ten so far. Stay alert, Harris. We're not exactly in friendly territory. And this Pasha... Keep one eye on them at all times. Agents Washington and Harris follow Pasha's faint glow through the dark mall, past the shuttered stores and the unlit exits, through service tunnels and snaking corridors, until finally they come to a large metal door. In there? Wash, I told you! Tunnels! I guess I owe you a Coke. Let's see where it goes. Ocean! Friends, come! Did they just say... Ocean? Maybe we should. The door twists open, and the blue light grows brighter. Unbearably brighter. And yet Pasha appears almost impossibly far away. Ocean. Okay, Pasha. Um... We're not anywhere near the... But maybe that wasn't quite true. For the swirl and the sound of waves and surf started to fill the small dark hallway, and what felt like water began crashing against the agents, pulling and churning them in its unseen grip. And then, all at once, they were lost. Thrown into a riptide of incredible energy and strength, pulled through that seemingly normal door, 
and into another place. Our narrator is Graham Rowitz. Margaret is Jordan Cobb. Eddie is Zach Labresco. Ernie is Atticus Jackson. Washington is Risa M. Harris is Russell Moore. Pasha is Tanya Miljovic. Mars is Eric Kemp. Herschel is Brandon Nguyen. And advertisement was Brandon P. Jenkins. Our composer is Danny Sweet. And I'm your sound designer and showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah. Our producer is Tom Owen. Visit margaretspodcast.com for more information. Or support our show at midnightdisease.net slash join.